Hey guys, welcome back to another ride. In today's ride, we're gonna be testing some new edge cases that I found. I just wanted to show you those. Let's go. All right, we got our first left here and we're gonna probably run into our first edge case here, right here. car is super unsure there's a sign right here for the uh be careful pedestrians crossing the caution sign these signs give fsd a hard time uh, there's another one here which it just drives past no problem so i've only noticed that the issues with those signs are only on turns these signs are like in a bunch of places a bunch of school zones around me and things like that they use them a lot for crosswalks to kind of remind people to be safe around crosswalks where the kids are playing or crossing. Definitely a white turn here. Uh, still taking that turn pretty wide here. Coming up to our next speed bump. And uh, looks like it's gonna handle it pretty well here. All right, now that we're getting out of the complex here, before we get to the uh, next sign by the park, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to Gary D for uh, getting his new Model 3 and to Tiffany L <clears throat> for getting her new Model Y. Uh, these guys you actually used my referral code, which I'm super grateful for. And uh, they each get $500 off their car. And I also get a $500 credit once they receive the car, once they pick it up. And uh, that credit is going to go towards keeping you know, the channel running, keeping the car charged. I'm gonna have a thousand dollar credit to, um, you know, charge up at superchargers, which is my primary way of charging. So I'm super grateful to those guys. And uh, just to give you an idea how massive this is for me, it, you know, I drove about 5,000 miles on the car at this point. And uh, that cost charging at superchargers has been about, four hundred fifty dollars five thousand miles so essentially these guys using my referral link uh have given me about a uh you know ten thousand mile runway of charging so i'm hugely appreciative to them big shout out and i'm uh, looking forward to hearing from them about their new cars and uh how much they love them basically and uh yeah just a huge thank you so uh, if anybody else, else out there uh, watching the video and you're thinking about ordering your Tesla, please consider um, using my referral link. You know, this uh, helps the channel big time. And we have been growing subscribers really quickly. The, the, the last few videos have done very well. So thank you to everyone who's subscribing. He's trying to get me to New York City to test out FSD. And we're gonna do that at a thousand subscribers. So huge shout out to every single person that hits that subscribe button, hits those like buttons and helps spread the videos, sharing them with other folks. I appreciate it so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, we're coming up to this uh, next turn here. And uh, there's another one of these uh, pedestrian crossing signs. And uh, this one it struggles really bad with. It actually tries to drive directly into the sign and then it adjusts for it, but it still struggles through it. So some edge cases here for you. I'm gonna edit our route. Uh, let's see here. And we're gonna go to our next destination. And uh, basically the idea for this route is uh, one of the my early subscribers, um, he actually started his own YouTube channel, uh, Nashville FSD. Uh, so check him out, give him a like, give him a follow on his videos. And uh, he recently had an issue with uh, like a one lane um, underpass for like uh, for a bridge or a railroad track. And I told him that I have one right by my right by my area where I live. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, 
drive over there and see if I'm gonna have the same experience because he has a hardware three model Y, uh, model three maybe. I'm not hundred percent on the on the car, but I know it's definitely hardware three. Uh, so we're just gonna test it out with hardware four, and uh, I think he's one version behind because the hardware threes have not gotten the uh, twelve dot five dot six dot three version. So we'll uh, we'll test that out for him. And uh, as I said, uh, you know, uh, he's got probably like what like thirteen or fourteen subscribers at this point. So uh, show him some love. Uh, he's got beautiful rides. It's a very scenic area that he lives in in Tennessee. So, yeah, definitely check him out. We're making a left here. There's nobody out. We're in. We're kind of middle of the day here, so right before lunch hour. So not too many people are out. But um, as I told you guys in my previous videos, you know, I'm noticing some definitely late braking for my comfort. It's not like dangerous per se, but it does make me uncomfortable. Um, and uh, one of the other things is uh, these signs, these signs, you know, they're, they're making uh, FSG um, definitely like question the turn. It's almost like it doesn't recognize that there is a sign in the middle of the road basically until it's like through the turn right so it's kind of it's kind of strange that it does that but it's also you know not a normal scenario where you know you just have a sign in the middle of the road uh, and that, that was right by a public park so uh, that's why they put those signs up there's a lot of people biking and walking so that's why they they do that they put those signs up to like you know encourage drivers to be cautious in those areas and uh, the uh, what made me actually do this test is by that park where um, it scooted around the sign when I took my kids there over the weekend um, it actually went on the opposite side of the road uh, and uh, I had to correct it and then go around the sign so I don't know if it's learned from me doing that or, you know, this time it just recognized the sign and, and went around it. But uh, it definitely like went on the opposite side of the road over the weekend. And I was like, I gotta do a video about this. And of course, this time the behavior is a little bit different and it actually did a lot better, which I'm happy about. You know, we want FSD to be as good as possible, you know, and progress as fast as possible because it'll save lives in the long term. It'll save millions of lives. And that's kind of uh, been like one of the goals of the channel is just uh, help this technology progress. And hopefully, you know, my data gets used to uh, get drivers out of the driver's seat. And because uh, we're not very good as humans, we're terrible drivers. I mean, there's 40,000 people that die every year. You know, like we're like we get upset about like, you know, uh, like a pedestrian getting hit or you know i mean obviously it's tragic or like you know a small group of people dying in some freak freak accident you know but then we accept like forty thousand deaths like because we drive cars I mean, this is crazy to me absolutely crazy and million and a million people getting injured and uh you know becoming handicapped like we are not good drivers and uh if we can get f the faster we can get fsd on the road and uh better than the human driver the more lives we're gonna save and more people are gonna you know live a better life overall just in general and you know without them getting hurt in these car accidents Anyway, we'll move on to something a little bit more positive. We are on the highway here. Uh, well, not highway, but we're on a 55 mile an hour road. So we have the uh, new speed profiles turn on when you get on any road above 50 miles an hour. We're currently on standard and um, standard profile. And I actually updated my offset for the speed. Um, the original offset by default was 40% for 
from the current speed limit. And uh, at that time, I didn't really understand like how that's useful. But uh, after doing a little bit more research about it, um, I've actually changed my percentage to 15%. So this way, um, wherever road I'm on, it will drive at uh, like any road over 50 it'll actually drive 15% over the speed limit maximum. So um, if you do the math on like a 65 mile an hour road, it'll drive 75 miles an hour maximum, which is perfect. I mean, everywhere I drive is like 10 miles, five, 10 miles over the speed limit. So if it can do that 15% down the line and uh, eventually once they lower the speed limit, for these profiles from 50 to maybe 35, the car will be like driving at maximum 15% over the speed limit, which would be, you know, like, you know, 40, 42 miles in the 35, which is perfectly acceptable in my area. You're not gonna get pulled over for driving, you know, five, seven miles over the speed limit. On the highways, it's 10 miles over the speed limit. Nobody's gonna bother you. Um, and when I say highways, it's anything like 65, 75 miles an hour. Um, so that's kind of the uh, thresholds that we have in the area where I drive. Oh, wow. We got some leaf cleanup here. So we're going to be going through a huge dust cloud. Let's see how FSD handles this. Currently, we're driving right into the leaf pile. All right. We're going around it. Oh, gosh. Okay. That was a little scary. <laughs> It actually drove for way too long towards the leaf pile and then kind of like the last few seconds away from the truck. I think it just didn't see the truck very clearly in all the dust, but once it re recognized that there is a truck, it did shift over a little bit. So uh, we are coming up to this one lane bridge here. We do have a car behind us, so I'm gonna you know, stay vigilant here. We're gonna see how it handles this uh, underpass from my buddy, Nashville FSD. Let's hope we don't upset the driver behind us too much. That's coming up here on the next bend. So in his scenario, he had to take over because the car would just froze right before the uh, entrance into the tunnel for the uh, underpass. Uh, I don't remember if it was a railroad track or if it was uh, a road that he was, uh, or he had like a bridge or something. Uh, in my case, it's a railroad track overpass and uh, it is a pretty busy spot. All right, so we're coming to it. All right, yeah, it handles it very well. You know, no sudden braking, no confusion. The wheel doesn't bounce around. So it handled it perfect. I mean, yeah, so, um, you know, expect the new version on Hardware 3 to handle those type of things for you, Nashville FSD. Um, all right, cool. That's all we have for today. I'm just going to pull into this, uh, pull into this parking lot and uh, do a little... So a little parking lot. Let's see how it handles this uh, parking lot. We're at a like a regular park here in the area, and uh, I'm just curious how it's going to handle this parking lot. This is, uh, this is definitely a little bit unique. So the front of the building is right here. Um, so we have arrived. So let's see what it does here with in terms of parking. All right, look at that. We are, oh, very jumpy, very jumpy, but it does try to park us. It does not do a very good job. Yeah, it needs a reverse right here. It's trying to reverse. You could, I could see like a little blue line trying to reverse to straighten itself out to pull into this spot correctly. I suspect, I mean, I don't know that for sure. But uh, I'm just going to put it in park so you see the, uh, actually in drive. Yeah, so this is the kind of parking job it did. It's all crooked, unfortunately. Um, but 
that's uh you know another attempt at parking that wasn't doing before We are heading home. I'm just gonna let FSD try to get out of this parking lot on its own. It's handling these turns really well in the tight parking lot here. The lanes are very tight. I got curbs on the side here. I'm really hoping we don't hit any curbs, which we don't. And uh, as you can see, there's no route planned here in the parking lot. So it's kind of doing its own thing. I don't know why it's stopping here. Um, so what's interesting is that the curbs ended and uh, grass began on the side and it seemed to stop because it wasn't sure what it's supposed to be doing. We are making a left turn. It's kind of driving in the middle of the lane here. So we do really need to shift over to one side or the other, but we're going to make a lift here. And uh, we're just driving back from the park. Uh, we're going to see here, we do have a one lane overpass here, so we'll see how it handles it on the way back. It did really well coming to the park, and there was no issues of any kind, so we'll see how it handles the situation here. And uh, There's no traffic lights or anything, so you kind of have to negotiate with the other drivers on the road. It's coming in kind of hot. All right, this back here is going to slow down for us. Hard stop here. He's waving us through. Yeah, blinking his lights. I had to push the accelerator there to get through. The car definitely was nervous of moving forward through there. So definitely an interesting scenario. It did come in very hot into, uh, into that one lane bridge entrance. I think if there was no cars there, it would have handled it perfectly. But because there was a car coming at the same time and it realized that both cars are not going to fit, it uh, had a bit of a panic attack. It kind of slammed on the brakes a little bit, came to a complete stop. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of uh, that's kind of how that went. And this is the uh, 12.5.6.3. And uh, we're stand up, set on standard driving profile. So... Uh, you know, it, it wasn't perfect. Uh, when we were going there, there was no cars, so it handled it really well. But on the way back with the cars, there's definitely a struggle. Uh, we're going back through the cloud of dust here for all the, uh, for the leaves that they're picking up. There's some cars driving on the wrong side of the road here. Okay, handled that pretty well. Yeah, everybody on that side is uh, driving on the wrong side of the road to uh, get around that truck picking up leaves. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified when the next video comes out. Take care of yourself, your family, and have a great day.